Thank you very much, Charles. It's a pleasure to serve with you and the Chair, and I congratulate the, mem the Honourable Member for Orkney and Shetland for securing this debate, which I believe is the first fisheries debate that, which has been held since the signing of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement at the turn of the year. Taking into account that fisheries was centre stage in the Brexit debate, it is long overdue. Normally, we have fisheries debates immediately before the annual fisheries negotiations with the EU, and straight afterwards, there is invariably a statement in the main chamber when the Minister announces the outcome of these negotiations, and members have the opportunity to ask questions on behalf of their communities. This year, these particular negotiations, which were historic, being the first conducted by the UK as an independent coastal state, were understandably concluded only last month, yet it appears they've been conducted behind a wall of silence. There was no opportunity for colleagues to raise concerns beforehand, and there has been no formal and full government statement since. The main headline seeping out of the negotiations is that it was agreed that the tonnage limits for the total allowable catch for non-quota species will not be enforced this year. This primarily advantages the EU fleet. It will lead to increased effort in fishing grounds that are already under enormous pressure, and it will damage the English inshore fleet. So, Charles, this is hardly an auspicious start to the management of our own waters, and I do hope that my honourable friend, the Minister, will address this concern in her summing up. Brexit does provide an opportunity to manage our waters in a better, more responsible way for the benefit of both the marine environment and for local people in coastal communities such as Lowestoft. Around the UK, this can play an important role in levelling up, and internationally, we can be a global exemplar. In East Anglia, the fishing industry came together with local councils, Seafish and the New Anglia LEP to produce the Renaissance of East Anglian Fisheries Report, that's REEF. The recommendations have been adapted as a result of the disappointing outcome of the Brexit negotiations, and I shall very briefly highlight some of these revised proposals. Firstly, it is important that our fishing stocks are sustainably managed to bring economic benefits to local coastal communities. In the short term, the management of the under 10 metre pool system should be improved to better support the inshore fleet. This requires the MMO to change its approach to trading and valuing quota for the pool. Secondly, the government must ban bottom trawling in marine protected areas, in particular on the Dogger Bank. They should also look to restrict engine power in MPAs, which will not only safeguard our fisheries for the future generations, but will also reduce CO2 emissions. Thirdly, the Southern North Sea should be managed as a mixed species fishery, with quota allocations and catch limits in line with the requirements of the discard ban. Funding and practical support should be provided to enable fishermen to trial new gears designed to minimise bycatch. Finally, we need to make more use of data to better manage conflicts between fishing and other marine activities such as wind farms. This can lead to arrangements that better manage the impact of displacement, which can have devastating impacts on local communities. So, Charles, in conclusion, we have the opportunity, a golden opportunity, to put in place a world-class system of fisheries management. We've not yet grasped that opportunity, though I hope and anticipate that in her summing up, my honourable friend, the Minister, will set down the route map that will enable us to do this.